Okay, so what gear do you actually need to start backpacking? Let's talk about it right now. Morning everyone, Ray from Hike A Lot. Hey, I get asked this question a lot. What gear do I actually need to start backpacking? We're gonna go through um, my gear list that I use and sort of what the summertime options are versus the wintertime options. I'm gonna go through and break out the gear into nine categories. And we're just gonna take each one as we roll through, talk about a few quick options and what the, uh, what the highlights are. So let's jump in. Okay, quick disclaimer first. What you do not wanna do when you roll out on the trail is look like this guy, because if you do, you're gonna have an absolute miserable trip. So everything we're kind of talking about today is focused on getting you uh, pared down, relatively small, so you don't have a ton of stuff hanging off the side of your bag, uh, so you're not setting yourself up for a miserable trip. So without fail, whatever we talk about in this video, someone's gonna come back in and say it's wrong, that you don't need this or you don't need that, and gonna have completely different opinions. That's perfectly fine. Everybody's free to hike their own hike. We're gonna talk about the stuff that I use in mine, and what does and doesn't work for me, and it's a basis for a good starter list for you. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the first category right out the gate is really your big three that is where you're gonna eat up the bulk of your weight. And that's gonna be your, your actual bag that you're carrying stuff in. We're gonna talk about those, uh, your sleep system, and then also what your sheltering system is. Uh, and included in your sleep system, I'm also counting your, uh, your sleeping pad as well. Uh, so kind of between those handful of objects, that's gonna be the bulk of the weight in your bag typically. Okay, so right out the, the gate, you really need to decide what kind of backpacking you're gonna do. Is this gonna be a uh, overnighter or, an, or typically a weekend thing, or am I gonna do long haul through hiking because that does kind of change your bag. And you need to figure out what, um, you need to figure out just sort of how much gear you're taking, because what you don't wanna do is buy a bag that's too large, because then you kind of have that inclination of, of, well, if I've got room, I can pack more stuff in there, and you end up taking more stuff than you actually need. So I do highly advocate uh, buying all your gear first and figuring out what the footprint is of that, and then buying the bag for it to, to fit inside. But obviously you do need a bag, and you need something that's gonna keep all your gear safe, hopefully keep it dry, uh, and, and make it accessible, and be comfortable for you while you're out on the trail. Do highly advocate as well going and being properly fitted for a bag. Doesn't mean you have to buy it at that place, I just need to figure out what does and doesn't fit you and, and how um, and what to look for in purchasing a bag. And a lot of different retailers and stuff out there are more than happy to, to fit you to a bag and then obviously sell you one. Uh, but go, go try them on. Uh, don't just order something blindly off the internet and, and think it's going to be perfect for you because not all bags are created equal. You got to have some kind of sheltering system and I group these into to really three categories. I've got your tent campers, you got your hammock campers, and then you've got your cowboy camping or tarp campers. Um, really, I, I kind of fall into all three of these, uh, depending on the situation. Like if I'm with, with my wife, uh, we'll take a little small uh, tent that we sleep in, not anything huge and elaborate, so you really need to like the person you're sleeping with in, in the tent because it gets a little crowded. Uh, but more often than not, in summertime, I'm in a hammock. Uh, wintertime, I'm much more of a tarp camper or a cowboy camper. Um, it, it's, there are pros and cons for each one of those, uh, but you need some kind of sheltering system and you don't want it to be overly heavy. But the biggest way to figure out which one is right for you is get out there and start trying some of them. Um, I like summertime. I like the, the hammock camping because I get the air circulation and I sleep cooler that way. Uh, I do, do want a bug nap so I'm not completely eaten up with mosquitoes. Um, some people like the security of the, of the actual closed in tent. Um, wintertime, I'm the exact polar opposite. I like the openness of being able to cowboy camp or, or actually just tarp camping. So it's all a personal choice. Uh, you just need to decide what's right for you in your situation. So coming in right behind that is obviously your sleep system. So obviously during the winter time, I use a much more robust sleeping bag than what I do during the summer. Uh, a lot of times summertime camping, I don't cover up with anything. Uh, but some people like to have the warm, cozy, something covering me up. I, doesn't, doesn't matter to me. Uh, but obviously during the wintertime, I want a sleeping bag, uh, possibly even a sleeping bag liner. Um, I also want to go through and have some kind of sleeping pad uh, that kind of gets me up off the ground, especially during the wintertime. Uh, one, it's a, it's a comfort factor, but then it's also a warmth factor because if I can get up off the ground, a little insulative barrier between me and the ground, I'm gonna sleep warmer that way. Uh, so pay attention to on your sleeping pads, uh, the R value, I'll give you the quick crash course, the higher the number, the colder you can sleep in it. Um, not all 
rating systems are created equally, but that's generally how they flow. The bigger the number, uh, the more cold weather tolerant it is, smaller the number, the less so. Uh, so winter camping, you want something in that three to four range, ideally, uh, depending on uh, where you are when you're camping. Uh, you may, de may definitely need to lean a little heavier into that, that rating system than at other places. Here in Texas, we don't really have winters, we just have not summers. And another item that people put on their list that some people, it's, a, it's an absolute necessity on my list, it's an optional item, uh, and that's a pillow. Um, sleep is obviously very important to all of us because if I don't sleep really well tonight, I'm gonna have a harder time tomorrow on the trail. So, so comfortable and warm sleep are both essential. For some people that pillow makes the difference. <sighs> For me, not so much. Okay, so a couple other things to keep in mind. Uh, one regarding your backpack uh, before we move off of this subject. Uh, you do want some way to keep your, your gear inside there dry in case of rain. Uh, some packs will come with a, with a pack cover to keep the rain out. Uh, some you have to buy this as an aftermarket. I personally am not a fan of a pack cover. I just use a compactor bag inside there and then if the outside of the bag gets wet, it's not that big of a deal for me. And then also additionally, if you do opt for uh, hammock camping, do keep in mind that you probably also want to carry a tarp because if it does start raining, obviously I don't want to get rained on inside my, uh, inside my hammock. Okay guys, the next category up is going to be clothing. And this one's going to be a little bit debatable because depending on how long you're out, you probably really don't want to take a ton of extra clothes. I know a lot of people get sucked into, I think I have to have a clean change of clothes for every single day. Guess what? Hiking and backpacking is stinky and smelly and dirty typically. You're just going to have to embrace that aspect of it and learn to enjoy the um, natural feel of it all. Uh, so having said that, there are a few things that I will take extras of uh, when I'm out and about, depending on how long I'm gone on the trail. Uh, but first out, you, you know, obviously you need comfortable uh, shoes that you can walk in. You want stuff that's about a half size bigger than your normal walk around sizing because your feet are going to swell. Uh, but whether you lean toward the trail runners or the hiking boots, I'm not going to get into that now. I flip back and forth between the two. I do more trail runners than hiking boots, but yeah, to each his own. Uh, there were times when I felt like I needed to have that extra support because I have a plate in one ankle. Honestly, trail runners, I've never missed that extra support whatsoever. But I do very much appreciate not having the extra weight of a heavier shoe on my foot when I'm out on the trail. Aside from the, your footwear, uh, obviously you want some socks. I, I'm definitely a fan of the, the wool socks. They seem to hold up better. They retain heat during the winter. They're not outrageously hot during the summer. And, and they just, they seem to be durable and sort of antifungal. And I just, I, I gravitate toward those, uh, whether it's winter or summer. Never, ever, ever do I wear cotton socks because if I do, my feet have uh, a higher tendency to blister than when they don't. But that's kind of a personal thing. Um, obviously, if it's winter, we need to pack different things than when it's summertime. I will also uh, often carry a base layer. Uh, I don't normally hike in the base layer, but I will put it on at camp and often sleep in, in the base. I use some kind of mid layer during the winter and then an outer shell, and then I'll normally take uh, like a puffy too. Uh, the puffy's invaluable. I did a review on a puffy here. If you're kind of interested, I've been just absolutely thrilled to death with his jacket. I'll throw a link to the video down in the description below. If you wanna feel free to check that one out. So obviously during winter time, uh, you want a hat, you know, keep your head warm, uh, especially when you're sleeping. I sleep in my hat, my beanie all the time. Um, gloves, anytime I've ever not taken my winter gloves, uh, I've really regret it and I've ended up wearing socks on my hands because my, my little digits get cold. Uh, but then obviously with all that stuff, it's the complete polar opposite if it's summertime. Uh, I do take, I take far more socks when I am summertime hiking. Uh, just because it's harder to dry them from one day to the next. And I really hate putting uh, sweaty, wet socks on the next day. Same thing with underwear. I will take extra pairs during the summertime. I take more during the summer than I do during the winter, uh, just because it's harder to dry everything out. Uh, I'm not a big hike in shorts type person. I do a lot of forest hiking, and I'm just not personally a fan of you know, flitting through the woods in, in just shorts because you know you, you get bugs and spiders and... and briars and poison ivy and all of that fun stuff that I just personally would rather avoid. So I wear long pants. I do often wear those zip off pants though so that you can zip off the legs uh, when you get to camp and then I have shorts. That's typically what I gravitate toward, toward during the summer and they're a lighter weight. And then some kind of uh, moisture wicking top uh, just to kind of help move the, the sweat off of my body. But those are kind of my clothing options when I'm out and about uh, during both winter and summer. 
Uh, only other thing I'll kind of go through and add on there, I do avoid cotton pretty much at all costs, like the plague. Uh, it just gets, it gets wet, gets clammy, and kind of clings to you. Um, another one that people will throw on here, and, and sometimes I do take them with me, uh, but it's sort of like the pillow from the first category. This is going to definitely be an optional category. Uh, some people really like taking a separate pair of camp shoes that I can take off uh, my, my normal hiking shoes and just have those to walk around camp with and sort of let my feet breathe. And it's normally a significantly lighter pair of shoes, uh, but then also something with a little more breathability, whether it's... Okay, so our third category is going to be our first aid and repair category. This is one that is, is critically important, but a lot of people will kind of shortchange this one for the sake of, of losing a little bit of weight, especially on the first aid side. Through, really importantly, uh, one thing that I pretty much am always carrying is some kind of little small pocket knife. Uh, use a Swiss Army knife or even the little tiny Leatherman uh, tools. Um, I don't carry anything huge. I'm not carrying the big Jackhawk 9000 uh, Rambo knife while I'm out and about. You don't need any of that stuff typically. This is about all I'm carrying. I'm, I'm carrying from a repair side almost never this entire thing, but just a needle and, a, and, and thread. I usually go ahead and pre-thread the needles, uh, carry just a little bit of stuff in case I need to do some gear repair. Outside of that, I pretty much always carry, not this roll, but just some individual uh, cutoffs of tenacious tape for, for actual uh, repairing gear. On my trekking poles, ignore my GoPro mount, I do carry a little bit of duct tape. Uh, I use this more for like marking uh, when I step off the trail than anything. But more importantly, uh, up here on this side, I also carry Luca tape, uh, which for me is going to be my blister treatment. I put it on my pole uh, because, quite honestly, it makes it far easier for me to address blisters in the field because now I don't have to rifle through my bag. I can, so I can sit down with my bag on my pack, take my shoe off, take my little handy pocket knife, cut off a little piece of Luca tape, slap it on the, the hot spot, and then at that point, I can put my shoe back on and get right back on the trail without having to ever remove my bag. So I'm more prone to taking care of those. Uh, so that Luca tape is really my first sort of line of, of first aid gear. I uh, also do always carry a small bag of any prescription meds that you're taking, at least enough for, for each day and, and possibly one extra day in case you had to stay out a little bit longer. But then I'll also go through in mine, I'll carry a couple Benadryl, maybe some Aleve, maybe a couple Ibuprofen, uh, some Imodium, some Pepto, just in case you have uh, digestive stuff going on. Not a, I don't, I'm not carrying big huge packets of it. I'm not carrying, you know, bottles. It's literally just two or three pills in, in a baggie. Coming in behind that, I do pretty much always carry an ace wrap. Uh, I always carry gauze in case I've got a, a little more elaborate bleed that I need to take care of. I, very, very, very few band-aids. Uh, I might take, if I do take a band-aid, it's a, it's a bigger blocked band-aid. It's something I need to actually cover up. I'll also go through and make sure I'm carrying uh, alcohol wipes so I can clean off an area. Uh, and occasionally, based on based on the trip, if I'm if I'm up and down very high and I think it's going to be rocky and it, you know possible issues of turning over an ankle or something like that, I may carry a Sam splint with me. If I do, I always make sure to carry extra ace wraps. Uh, the ace wraps are great for not only just bandaging, but they're good for turned ankles. You know knee pain, any of that stuff. I've actually pulled it out and had to treat people on the trail with mine and, and on more than a couple of occasions. Uh, so don't shortchange your first aid. The next category is one that's very near and dear to my heart and that's going to be navigational equipment. It's wonderful to have your smartphone while you're out on the trail, but have you ever broken your phone or had a dead battery or lost your phone? I know, I've heard it before, the trail's marked, I don't need anything else carry a compass, carry a real map, and know how to use the two together, uh, and you'll, you'll be much, much better off in the long run if you can figure that piece of it out. It's always a good idea, and I hang it off the end of my compasses, a whistle, because I can, if I am in trouble, uh, one, I always have this compass in my pocket, on my person, not buried in my bag somewhere, along with the map. But then if something happens to me, I have this item that I can blow on and signal for help if I do hear people and not have to rifle through my bag looking for something. I can use this whistle far longer than I can sit and yell for help. Uh, so another good, good thing to keep in mind uh, to take out with is just something to write with and write on uh, so that I can keep some notes of where I am and keep track of, keep track of, of you know, when I've deviated off the trail and, and what my direction was and how far I went and, and just kind of 
all goes back into to that equation of keeping me safe while I'm out on the trail. So it's a simple thing to go through and learn how to use and keep up with. And it just gives you that, that extra little bit of security so you're not quite so technology dependent while you're out and about. Obviously on your smartphone, you want to have maps downloaded. Uh, hopefully you're using some kind of uh, trail mapping system, whether it's all trails or gut hook, or excuse me, what's it called now? Um, far out, still getting used to that name. Or Gaia or Onyx or, you know, there's a ton of different apps out there that kind of uh, allows for that trail mapping while you're, you're using your cell phone. Okay, so rolling into our fifth category now, and that's what I call the elements. Uh, so that's all the normal stuff that's gonna help protect us from either the wind or the cold or the sun. Um, going through, obviously, I live in Texas, so summertime camping and hiking and backpacking, obviously we have to be incredibly heat and sun conscious. Uh, so if I'm out and about, I'm always making sure to uh, keep sunscreen, chapstick, because I don't want to get scorched because I really do not tan whatsoever. Uh, bug spray is always a plus in this one too. Uh, I use the, the Picardin on my skin, uh, often the lotion or, or the permethrin on my clothes helps keep the, keep the bugs down. Pretty much always in a hat when I'm on the trail because I am absolutely blind if I do not have on something to give, to give me a little bit of shade and coverage for my eyes. Um, but then that may also include a, a rain jacket or poncho. Then a lot of these same ones will, will translate over to wintertime as well. I may not necessarily be worried about bugs and things like that so much during the wintertime, but I do still have to keep in consideration that, you know, my head's gonna get cold, I'm still dealing with sunlight, it's still out there, I can still get sunburned just because it's not hot outside. Uh, so don't, don't discount that piece of it while you're out and about. And then obviously another optional item out on, on the elements category is gonna be sunglasses themselves. I don't typically take them because more often than not, I'm either losing them or breaking them. Normally the hat suffices and I'm good to go. But having said that, if you are in a, a snowy environment or you're gonna be on a lot of water where there's a lot of reflection up on the sunlight, uh, sunglasses might be, a, might be a must because what you do not want is a, a healthy dose of snow blindness. Okay, so next up, our category six is gonna be our hygiene. And I'm, I'm not worried about deodorant when I'm out on the trail. Like I said earlier, you're just going to stink. Uh, and you, the sooner you can accept that, the, the uh, more pleasant of a trip you'll have. But I do want to be able to go through and, and just take care of my normal bathroom functions and also be to brush my teeth. So I always take a little travel toothbrush. I'm not out sawing the ends off my toothbrush and trying to get ultralight with any of that. I do, however, carry toothpaste tablets, which I just have in this little jar because they come in a little bag. Uh, these are called unpaste. And so all it is is a little aspirin sized tablet of toothpaste that uh, you crunch on it and you basically, once it kind of mixes with your saliva, you've got toothpaste that you can then brush your teeth with. I like those uh, because I know exactly how many brushes I have when I go in the woods. So I make sure I've got enough for each day and I'm not worried about does this travel size toothpaste have enough in there for me. Um, and I have my normal sort of bathroom bag, I keep it in a red bag because quite honestly, if I'm looking for it, it may be emergent. On the outside of it, I hang my trowel. Uh, that just keeps it nice and convenient uh, so that I can not have to open my bag up. Because a lot of times when I get to camp, I'll dig my hole before I actually need it uh, so that when nature calls later on, the hole's there, I've already found my spot. And then inside the bag, you've got a couple different options here. Uh, obviously, right out the gate, you can do the roll of TP in the Ziploc bag. I occasionally use it. Wipes work perfectly fine, or even just the individual wipes. Uh, I actually usually carry these, a couple of them in my bag, just to sort of clean my body at night before I get in my sleeping bag. Or, or other than the TP, I'm more of a uh, trail bidet uh, toilet paper tablet person. Uh, these are just compressed tabs that once you wet these, they'll all kind of puff up and it makes up makes a, sort of like a big wet wipe uh, that's, that's biodegradable. Usually for a relatively short trip, that's, and that's plenty to, uh, to carry me away. These little tubes will hold 11, I think. Uh, and usually between these two, that handles most of my functions. I do always carry uh, hand sanitizer because you don't want to be able to clean up when things are over with. The last thing that's out there uh, on my side of the world, so this normally stays in my hygiene bag as well. Um, it's, it's just sort of a stick that you roll on and uh, it lubricates things so that you don't have issues with with uh, chafing as you're out on the trail. 
and then I've noticed that if I did have chafing and had not put this on, if I put it on at camp, it usually does a good job of, of healing the area overnight and things look much better the next day. Uh, obviously, uh, in some areas you're not allowed to uh, bury your poo while you're out and about. Uh, so you can, if you're in an area, always check to see if it's an area that requires you to carry a wag bag so you have to pack all of your stuff back out. Uh, most parks and, and camping areas and hiking areas will have that uh, detail somewhere on their website and some of them will even go through before uh, they will issue you a permit. You've got to prove that you've got a bag per person per day. Uh, so definitely look into the wag bags if you're going to pack, pack everything out. Uh, ladies, obviously uh, for any of you out there that's watching this, uh, you have completely different hygiene uh, issues than what guys do. Uh, don't let that discourage you if it's in the midst of your monthly visitor. Don't let a lot of what my friends do that that uh, have their visitor while on the trail. They'll carry a separate Ziploc bag with tape on both sides of it, just so they don't have to see the remnants of uh, any of their discarded feminine products. They'll just drop those in the Ziploc bag, fold it up, toss it in their bag, out of sight, out of mind, and keep continue on hiking. But Pack just like you would for your normal trip to work on a Wednesday morning that you happen to have your monthly visitor. So, you don't have to do anything too extraordinarily special, but definitely keep enough stuff to keep yourself clean because what you don't want is a UTI while you're out on the trail or even some other kind of infection. So, hygiene is super important whether you're male or female. The category seven is going to be our food and hydration side of the world. Um, there are dozens of different ways that you can go about cooking your food or even uh, not even eating food that has to be cooked. Uh, some people cold soak their food. I prefer a hot meal. Uh, even within that area of, all right, I'm gonna heat my food, there's, there's tons of different ways you can do it. Mine looks just like this. Uh, this is kind of the configuration that I always use. And every bit of it fits right into here. Uh, it's pretty light. My fuel's in here, my stove's in here, there's some spices, here's my utensil. Uh, this is just a little koozie that helps keep me, uh, helps keep my stuff warm while it's actually cooking so that I'm not burning uh, fuel the entire 10 minutes, something needs to be boiling. Um, I carry all of my food uh, inside my backpack, inside of a little dry bag. Uh, I pack it individually in here in Ziploc bags uh, by the day. So all of my Friday food will be in a little Ziploc bag, all of my Saturday food in a Ziploc bag, all my Sunday food in a Ziploc bag. And that keeps me from, uh, one, overpacking when I'm fixing my meals, but then also it keeps me from eating the food today that I plan to eat tomorrow. Uh, just sort of keeps me a little more regimented with that. And inside here, inside in this one dry bag, I always keep two things. I keep an extra bandana and then also my cordage to, to hang my bag up so I can keep uh, bears and raccoons and mice and everything else that may want to mess with my food in the middle of the night can keep it up and I'm, I'm safe and away from everything. Okay, so that covers the food section, now the hydration piece. I am not a fan of the big bladders that go down in the back of your backpack. I always take those things out. I hate them because one, I hate cleaning them, but then two, I have a harder time telling exactly how much water I have at any given point. So I do more of the life water bottles or the smart water bottles. I always swap them out so that I've got the flip cap on them. I put these little hangers on here, which actually clips to the shoulder strap on my backpack. And I'll always keep one right here. And if I'm carrying multiples, they go in the pouches on the sides. And so it's right here, all I have to do is unclip it, drink, clip it. Uh, and then I'm just filtering back into these when I'm done, as opposed to carrying gallons and gallons of water. And, and that's all obviously dependent on whether or not I have water sources around, because you know you wanna know beforehand when you go out there, uh, really how accessible is water? Because what you don't wanna do is plan on it being there and everything be dry and then you're kinda up the creek, even though it's a dry creek. So my hydration solution right this minute, I'm pretty much always on one of the Sawyer products uh, if I'm backpacking. If I hike, I take a grail because I'm carrying less stuff. I'm kind of always on the move. Uh, but right this minute, I'm on the Sawyer squeeze. Sometimes I do the mini. Uh, I did the micro squeeze for a really long time and it finally died on me and I just haven't bought another one yet. Uh, use this in conjunction with a, a knock dirty water bag. This threads onto here, just like this. This piece threads onto my water bottle right here, and then I can just hang everything and let it gravity feed into here. And that's been a great solution for me because now it's passive water purification while I'm doing something else. And if I, you know, in the middle of hiking and I'm not ready to stop and I still need water, it really doesn't take that long for that exact same situation. I can take and squeeze this knock bag and speed, speed things up, and it really doesn't take that long to fill my water bottles up. So that's been the way I've addressed 
at least the hydration side of it. Okay, so category eight, we're narrowing the home stretch here. Uh, it's gonna be all electronics. First off, I'm a firm believer in a headlamp. I carry this above and beyond everything else. Uh, I don't really often carry flashlights and all that fun stuff, but a good headlamp, especially a, a rechargeable one, um, works beautifully for me. I do always make sure that I have a battery bank with me, and this is super important because I do carry with a lot of electronic devices, even though I'm not carrying a bunch of lights. I always wanna make sure to have my watch. I can recharge it while I'm out on the fly. I carry an emergency beacon for my communication and my tracking. Um, I, I can recharge this from the trail. It runs off of uh, AAA batteries inside here, but I have a charging cable that they're all rechargeable. You just plug into the top of it. Uh, so I can charge my phone, I can charge my beacon, I can charge my watch, and my headlamp all off of this battery pack, as opposed to carrying multiple different uh, sizes of batteries with me on the trail. This was the lightest option for me. Some people really like a flashlight. Uh, I have used this little Goal Zero flashlight, which gives me a flashlight, but then also has a lantern function, and it dims down to almost next to nothing, which really prolongs how long the light works. Um, this thing works like a champ. Uh, it too is rechargeable off the bottom of it. So if you're looking for something that's a little more of a lamp function, uh, this thing works great. Uh, I'll occasionally carry it. It kind of just depends on what I'm planning on doing. But uh, from an electronics perspective, uh, always need some kind of lighting source. Always need a way to keep those things charged if they're rechargeable. And I do I really, really, really stress the rechargeable stuff because I don't know how many times I've gotten in the woods and found that I had dead batteries because something accidentally got turned on in my bag. That's was really the last thing I moved to a rechargeable was, was the beacon, and it's kind of the last thing I want to cover on the electronic side. Uh, this is the Spot Gen 4. This is the one that I personally use. It doesn't mean that's the perfect one. It just This was the perfect one for what I was doing. And I wasn't really worried about two-way communication, but I needed a way for my wife to keep up with where I was and give her a comfort level that I was still alive. It's been perfect for that. Uh, but definitely look into the beacons and stuff if, you are, uh, if you're out and about a lot, especially in areas that don't necessarily have a great phone signal. Okay, then our ninth category, I just call miscellaneous. It's sort, just sort of a catch-all grouping for me. Um, some people view these items as optional. There's some of these in here that I view as optional, some of them we've already talked about, some we haven't. Uh, but then some of them in here for me are, are mandatories. Uh, like right off the bat, I always carry just a little small uh, fire kit. Just something, just something that makes a, a little campfire at night after you sort of set up. Just that kind of comfort companion. Just just a, a big enough kit to make that easy enough so I'm not scrambling and, and having to fight with, with uh, trying to get something lit. So it's not anything overly elaborate. It's a little bit lighter, which I normally have a secondary one inside my cook kit. Um, a little bit of tender and stuff just to kind of help, help get things started. Uh, nothing elaborate. Obviously, you want to carry any applicable permits that you have to have with the location that you're currently in. Uh, obviously, you want to leave a, a detailed trip plan with uh, someone back home so that if on the instance that you don't show up, they know how to to uh, start people looking for you. For me, that goes in my packing list because it's one more thing that I have to do when I'm getting ready to go on a trip. Um, we talked about the emergency locator beacons. Another biggie is a chair. I know people who absolutely will not go out on the trail without having a camp chair. I personally don't use them. I've tried, I have one, I don't really like it. I use the, fo the foam kind of accordion butt pads. Uh, that works great for me. It doubles as a pillow. Uh, a lot of times, with, um, especially during the summertime, I'll use that more often than not as my pillow. Um, it works perfectly great. I've got a nice soft dry spot to sit. Yes, I'm on the ground, uh, but it's not a one pound chair or, or heavier that I'm taking out on the trail with me. Lastly, and this one's a, a, a little bit of a controversial one, uh, I do not think trekking poles are optional. I personally think they're mandatory. Uh, I think you're nuts if you're out on the trail with, without them or maybe it's just the fact that my knees are entirely too old and the uphill downhill elevation changes and the rocky terrain and the, the crossing of the rivers it, it makes every bit of that easier if you're carrying trekking poles so for me they're not optional okay guys i know that was a longer video than than what i'm normally turning out but i do get asked this question quite frequently so i wanted to at least give you guys as, as close to a stab of that as I possibly could. Uh, keeping in mind this is what works for me in the locations that I'm going. Obviously you can pick out exceptions. You know, if I'm hiking up in Canada, I'm, you know, during the winter time, I probably need crampons and 
snowshoes and, and completely different setups, but I'm talking about a basic kit that's kind of gets you started in warmer climates. Uh, I'm not necessarily, um, it, it's not going to be necessarily the end all be all for every single situation. Obviously, there's always going to be exceptions. Uh, but this is the starter kit. This is kind of what what I use as a baseline and then I add on or remove things based on the location that I'm going to at that time. Uh, I didn't even get into the fact that I carry way too much uh, camera gear while I'm out and about on the trail and often that adds a substantial amount of weight to my uh, to my bags. This is just intended to be a good starter spot for you guys on your on your journey toward moving into backpacking and you know, get you out on the trail faster and as always if you're out there right now just remember left foot right foot repeat We'll see you out there soon.